Okay, good morning, everyone. We've got seven people with us. Can you hear me okay? Is sound coming through okay? Yeah, all good on my end. Okay, thank you. Thank you for that. Um, okay, so this, this week we're doing inheritance. So it's a brand new topic. Uh, we didn't do it in the previous course. So this is, this is all brand new for us. Okay, and there's a few things we might do as well. So there's, um, we might just finish off the last the slides from last week. Uh, pe pe some people stayed on and we finished them after about f five minutes after the class should have ended. Uh, but many people couldn't stay because the other lecture, the other tutorial was starting. So, and other classes were starting. So we'll finish off those as well. And we might also talk about static versus instance. And uh, this is just some material I'm still working on, so it's not quite finished yet, but. It's, it's good enough to give you a really good idea what static and instance means. Okay, and you need to get your, um, you need to get these straight in your mind for this course as well, static and instance, what they mean. Okay, so we might start off by finishing off last week's slides, and that gives people more time to arrive. We've got 10 people now, so there's people still arriving. So I might finish off last week's slides, and then we'll look at static versus instance, and then we'll jump into, jump into inheritance. Okay, so do things in the order of complexity. <laughs> so we started talking about static and instance last week, and that's why I was going to go on and do some extra slides this week to really show you what it means. So we had a, a static field here, which was next ID, and there's a method called get next ID, which returned the next ID uh, if you needed it, and set ID, which sets the employee ID. So it sets the employee ID to the current value of next ID which is our static field, and then we add one onto it. And we saw that static fields were sort of like communal class data for all class objects. So for every object you create of the type employee, they all share the same value of next ID. So if you, if you call this method for one, set ID for one employee, next ID has been incremented for all employees that you've created. Okay, so that's the beauty of static. So if, you, if you've got data that needs to work like, like you're allocating IDs or you're, uh, you're keeping track of the number of objects you've created, then uh, static data is the perfect use for that sort of thing. Just set up a, a, an integer called whatever and make it static. Um, so we did this one. Um, we did a UML diagram. And then there's activity two, which is creating the, the class for it with the constructors. And we got most of the way through that, I think, in, in class. But we might just quick do a quick review. Um, hey, Mike. Yep. Um, when I had a look at the GitHub, uh, like sometime last week, this wasn't pushed yet. Is there? Um, I had some issues with GitHub. That's all. So it's all, okay. all, it's all, it's all there now. So yeah, and, okay, thank you. and 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 after today's lecture, this will all be there straight away. Uh, I had some issues, and um, uh, and then because um, I, I, I'm running GitHub and I in, in browser and save some junk in there, and um, GitHub took that to the latest version. So I lost this version for a while. So I lost some trade, but I found it again. That's all right. Just keep rolling back. Uh, here we've got like a static variable can track the number of accounts. Okay. And every time you create an account, you here in our parameterized instructor, we add one to the number of accounts. Okay, so if 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 this if, if this if we were creating a bunch of accounts here, for example. Hey Mike, you're lagging a little bit. I'm I'm, I'm lagging. Okay. Is, is, is the voice coming through clearly though? It is now. It is now, okay. I'll try and not move too much then. <laughs> the other, only other option is to reboot and I don't really want to do that again. Back one. And we'll call it the the default constructor there. Okay, so the code up here runs. Okay, that's our default constructor. 
the work you're calling our Prateurized instructor for our fields. It's gotten pretty bad again. I said, okay, I might do a quick reboot then. Sorry about that, people. I'll, I'll do a quick reboot and I'll be right back with you as quick as I can. Oh, dear. Save everything. Make sure I save this time. Okay, be right back. Okay, so back again. Is that better now? Also keeping the chat window open in case anyone wants to type any chat comments. Okay, thanks, Jared. Sounds good. That's good. Thank you. Righto, so <clears throat> let's proceed on with our static and instance. And um, we're looking at the exercise two, activity two. And I was creating some accounts. So this account here was calling the default constructor, which is this chap up here, which behind the scenes calls the parameterized constructor and passes through the, uh, the values to be initialized and then adds one onto the number of accounts. Okay, so after the first account's been created, the number of accounts will be one, because it's static data. Okay, and if, if we create another account, account two, pass through whatever data is needed to the, to, to the parameterized constructor, we're now, now creating account two. Again, this code runs, the default constructor, or the parameterized constructor code runs, add one, adds one to number of accounts. So this would now be two behind the scenes. Okay, so it's static data. Any, any, if any class object does anything to it or increments it or de decrements it or changes the value, that, that change is reflected across all class objects because they all share the same data for this, for this field. Okay, and quite often you'll see the term instance fields used and that's instance data like this guy. And then you'll see class fields and they're usually the static fields. Okay. So if, you, if, you, if you're doing things where you need to keep track of the number of accounts or the last used ID or anything like that, immediately, keep, uh, immediately think of static data. That's what you need. Okay, so it's really good stuff. Um, so we've done the, we've done a, we've done, uh, Part of the data, there was three data items, and I asked you to fill it in, fill in some data items there, fill in some more initialization there. The other accessor methods, um, the get number of accounts. Get number of accounts has to be a static method because it's working with, well, actually, it doesn't. It could be an instance method. Okay, because instance methods still get access to static data, like here. Okay. So a construct is really an instance method. It's just a special instance method. And it's got... Mm, I had the message come up, internet connection unstable. I've got full bars. I think it's just the load on Zoom again. I think Zoom's just playing up again. Am I still coming through okay? You're okay for the most part. There was a bit of a... Uh, lag spike there for a few seconds, but okay. it's up and down. Okay, sorry about that, everyone. We'll just have to do our best. Um, I've also got this thing converting here. Hang on, this is converting. So, uh, that was for the earlier part of the class. Yeah. Uh, and we have uh, and a little bit of and there's a little question zero we need to sort of take a narrow to see um, what it was asking. And um, we partially answered it. I basically did it for one of the data you had. Did the answers in the So that's one of the things that we set down. The only one that stands up here is our primary risk structure. You might have to just give it a bit of mic, we can't hear you at all at the moment. Okay. Dear idea. It sounds like it's good again now. Okay. Righto. Um, so if, you, if you're doing validation down here in your set methods, really you should be doing something up here and ask for that. It's really, it should work. 
Yeah, it's yeah, really, really bad, bad again. <laughs> okay. This this Zoom thing's almost finished converting. I'm hope, hoping that will uh, make some start being again. Um, Ten percent to go. Hopefully it'll pick up then. Okay, so that part here. Problem comes if you make it. Okay, yeah, so hopefully things will pick up now that that Zoom thing's finished. Um, we could make it static. You got all the data reference in here static, so that's fine as well. But if we had a static method like this. That would be, uh, that would not be okay. okay. Because this is an instance field, and instance fields can be accessed by static methods. Okay, because these static methods are for all class objects, like a little global area of general class objects. So when you see account number, how can I possibly know which account you're referring to? The reference to the current object. Okay, so that would be an error. Again, the Java code for following the effect of this operator. Okay, so this is something we'll talk about in a second as well. So here we've got primitive num loops and we're saying num1 equals num2. So the value is just being copied across. Num1 is down 15. Num1 is down whatever value num2 had, which is 15. It's a pretty dodgy, is it? Sorry, Amy. Um, actually, I think we just have to limp on. I'm, I'm sorry. Um, I'll try, I'll try so that it doesn't cut out too much, maybe. It's hard to <laughs> I'm um, um, employees and employee are reference types. John Harry, E1 and E2. And when I say E1 equals E2, so I say E1 and E2 both refer to the same employee now. And they're both referring to M2. Okay, so E1 no longer refers to John. Okay, they both refer to Mary. Okay, so if I call, call the mutator method E1, E1 dot change name for something else, that will also affect E2 because they're both referring to the same object. Okay. And if nothing's referring to, to, to this employee anymore, then she will run up garbage collector this runs behind the scenes automatically and it will automatically clean up that memory and make it available for this program for the variable sort of fields. Okay, this is an example of when you create an employee. Employee Harry equals new employee. Okay. And the employee has their own name, their own story, their own hide date, and any, any other instance fields there are. Okay. And here we're saying date d equals Harry dot get hide day. Okay. And if we didn't do this sort of thing down here, where we're creating a clone of the date, then we're returning a reference to this date. If we just said if we just said we could hide day down here, we'd be returning a reference to this date, and of course it's a reference. Anything anybody can change or access it all, change the data that's there. Okay, so even if it's private data, it can still be changed. Okay, so what you do for safety is you, you, you correct, you, you return a copy of fire day. And this is where clone comes in. So you're returning a date object, which is via clone. Okay, so instead of returning a reference to this thing, you're creating this extra date over here, which has the same value, and returning a reference to that. 
Okay. And then if the user wants to change that and mess around with that's fine. Because um, there's this thing I can do to affect this one. This is a separate date, this private data. So Jared's just asked, am I going to upload these lectures to YouTube like I did last time? Um, I, I, I might do, but I, I might do, if, if I do all, do all the extra editing and things I did last time, uh, I, I spent over, well over 50 hours last time, a little editing and a table of the contents, and <laughs> I was on another page for any of that work, it was just extra work I wanted to do, make sure the lectures were as good as possible. So if, if I upload them, that's the bare bones, with the sound requests and everything included. Okay, so I won't be going through editing and inviting up and adding pop ups and tables of contents and all these just stuff like that. Um, just so much work, so much extra work that I didn't get paid for any of it. Not that I mind, I like doing a good, good thing for students. So. Uh, that, that explains that more, but also the little thing that's coming up on the second instance will go into this further. Showing when you've got a local variable in a method. Having a sign name as an in variable and, and, a, and, a, and that's called shadow variables, for example. Here we've got name, and these are instance fields. Okay, and then we've got name and salary. We've got two names, and two salaries, and two IDs. Okay, so each one of those fields is shadowed. So, done in this method, if I just say name on its own, I'm going to do if I want to refer to that name, the class field name, or the instance field name, I need to put a this in front of it, so this dot. And this is something, something we talk about in the pro course type. Okay. So, sorry, this dot salary means the class instance field salary. And this is the here field, which is that one there. Okay, so we'll go for that. And people don't avoid listening to use this by saying string n. So I name it in a double S and saying salary this. And that's having to use the whole this dot thing to get around the shadow fields. I, I like this way better because then if you do a rename of name, you don't have to also search the N or name one or input name or something like that, whatever you want to call this local field. Okay, so I like using the same names for both and then just saying this dot. Then if you need to do a rename of name to Surname or like family name, you can confidently do it. They don't have to worry about changing all the ends and the number of which you might have used. Okay, so good meaningful names and keep them, keep them consistent is a good way to go. That's a little chat of chat We've still got that in a prior lecture too. This is all revision, really, what we're doing now. We just, we're just diving into static instances a bit more deeply, and we'll do it throughout the term as well. Okay, so that was it for the week one slides. Um, any questions before we move on? Anything to do with covering week one? Okay, all good. So I'll, up, I'll upload this latest version to, to the GitHub as well. Let's move on to week two. And we'll do this first, and if we have time, we'll double back on that extra set versus instance slides I've got. Um, and if we don't have time for that, this will be next week. All the time soon, don't worry. And it's all extra stuff for you, next time. Okay, so inheritance, a brand new topic. Welcome week two. <laughs> got 12 people with us, so. And we, we got a good class size. So we'll talk about things like superclass, subclass, overriding this casting, and a two string method. We've talked about the two string uh, quite a lot in the prior course. We talked about typecasting and casting in the prior course. Uh, I think I mentioned override in passing, but I didn't really talk too much about it. It's actually a very valuable thing to help you out. We'll talk about that, talk about that more today. Okay, so if you, you think about if you think about employees and managers. Manager is like an employee because manager also has all the attributes of employee. So they might have a name and salary, a high date and a whatever. Um, a location in the building and all sorts of things that an employee has. The manager might also have special fields or special 
methods, uh, budgets. For example, they might have a bonus, a yearly bonus based on how the company does or how their key performance indicators do or some, something like that. Managers usually get something extra. Okay. And they get that because they manage people, which is <laughs> do it well as well. So if we're creating an employee class, we wouldn't want to copy everything in the employee class and credit into another file and call it manager and add the attributes. Because then we've got the same code like or similar code in two places. Um, okay, so we wouldn't want to do this. So you, so you, so you want to do that, okay? You wouldn't want to copy everything that's in the employee class, paste it into a manager class and then just change the name and then add the extra bits, bits for a manager because you're all that same code uh, duplicated in two places. Okay. This is where inheritance comes in, our inheritance. Okay. We can save us duplicating all this code. We don't have to reinvent the wheel again to have to maintain the same code in two or more places. We just keep all that code that's just once done once. So don't create a new class and measure, just add the functionality to the employee class and add the functionality for manager to the manager class. And then think about this relationship. Every manager is an employee. So there's is a relationship going on. Okay, so this is our relationship a manager. Eventually, manager is a employee. Let's give a question. You can say all managers are employees, in other words. Could you also say employee is a manager? Would that be true? Just Not sure. I don't think so. No, that's, you're quite right. You can't. You couldn't do that because only some employees are managers. So you could not say that. That would be that would be false. Okay. And the reason is not all employees. Employees. Okay. So it's only true one way. The Russian company worked on my all managers are employees, but not all employees are managers. Okay. So when you start in a relationship between data like that, immediately think inheritance. Okay. So this is, is a relationship going on. So you might have a, a hierarchy like this in your, your little company. You might have employees and then special types of employees. And there might be managers and secretaries and programmers and all sorts of things. Okay. And there might be special types of certain uh, em employees at this level. So there might be executives, which are a special type of employee. Okay. They might get perks, okay, depending on how the company goes. Okay. They might get like off once a week <laughs> and whatever. So they might have a really nice life, but they're further up the ladder and they. They might have extra, extra things to that only they get. So executive is a manager, manager is an employee, but the employee is not a manager. Okay, only some employees are managers. And manager is not an executive because only some managers are executives. Okay, you might have special types of programmer, you might have special types of secretary. Uh, you know, so you have, and you could have multiple types. So you could have um, systems programmer, uh, a senior programmer, you know, you might have types of programmers as well. So it's not just not just one one relationship coming, it could be many. Like we had here, many, many people. So we do use method of loading is a question I've just been asked. Uh, yes. Okay. 
With that lot of prior course, if you weren't in the prior course, you'll see that we did a lot in the prior course. And we've actually done in this uh, example here. If you, if you think about instructors as methods, which are not really the special types of methods, we actually did some metaloading here. So we've got fixed account and fixed account, two methods with the same name. Okay, which can get told if you don't pass any parameters. This one gets called. If you pass in the parameters, this one gets called. Okay, so we've got an example of that down here. When we run this one, the default constructor gets called. Down here, we're passing through the parameters that are needed. And the, if the parameterized constructor gets called. So that's, that's actually overloading in practice. She says overloading. You've got multiple methods for the same name. And which one gets called depends on the context and also what parameters you pass. Overloading polymorphism. We'll talk about more next week as well. So uh, that's interesting. So you don't, don't worry. Go along next week. After next week, you'll have to be a lot happier. Question? Thanks for asking it. Okay, back on this topic. Um, inheritance. So, class manager, we want to do inheritance in Java. You use the extends keyword. Okay. So, and use that to, to know inheritance in Java. So the manager class inherits from the employee class. The manager class extends the employee. So everything that's in the employee class is automatically available to the manager class. And then you can add any extra stuff that you need just to make managers unique. Whatever bonus they get, you might have a bonus, a private field called bonus, and then a get bonus and a get bonus and so on. Okay. And the way I think about it is a little bit strange in a way. You've got to come back to this diagram. So employee is a superclass of manager. It's above manager. You might think manager is above employee. But it's not in, the, in inheritance. The superclass is the parent. Okay, so this is a, this is a superclass of manager and secretary and promo. And manager is a superclass of executive. Okay, so when, when you're talking about this relationship here, that's the superclass, that's the subclass. And you talk about this relationship here, that's the superclass, and that's the subclass. Okay, so there's that sort of subclass, superclass thing to keep in mind as well. Employee class is the subclass, and managers the subclass. Okay, so to save doing this sort of thing where we're re repeating everything in the employee class, we can just do this. Extends employee and just a bonus. It's a way to work about in the manager class. Everything else in, in the employee class is automatically available to us. So it's pretty powerful stuff. It, 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 it can save you duplicating the wheel and re replicating the wheel uh, in so many ways in hands. Okay. But the thing you've got to make sure you do, and this is the tricky part because it is it's easy to get sidetracked, especially when you're getting started, you've got to make sure there's a clear relationship there. Okay. So, for example, um, you would say this. Manager extends product. Doesn't really make sense, does it? Okay, so, uh, managers, unless you're selling managers, <laughs> which I guess it could be possible that you're hiring your managers as products, maybe. But that probably doesn't make sense. But manager and employee or sends employee, that makes perfect sense. Okay. So if everyone, we've got 12, 11 people still with us, can everyone, can everyone see, see if they can think of an inheritance relationship? And just type it in the chat window or say it. So just think of an example. Uh, 
Uh, so German Shepherd is a dog. Yeah, okay, yep. Yep. Oh, that's more of an instance, isn't it? Maybe, maybe not. No, maybe not. Which one should be it? Um, very good cut on that. With dogs, good dog cut on that. Um, I'll put a question mark here. It's possible. Um, I believe this time my dog is an uh, animal. Be a better, better one to say. This, this one might be more of a. That's better for that. Digital from clock. Yeah, you could have different types of clocks. So um, a digital clock is a clock. Yep, that's right to me. That's certainly possible. And you could have analog clocks, digital LED clocks, Nixie clocks. So the Nixie tube is a little vacuum tubes with the digits in, and you can make different ones light up, and they they make quite nice clocks. A car is a vehicle. Ah, oh, beautiful. Car is a vehicle. Yep, that's beautiful. Um, you won't have. Fridge is a plate. <laughs> Different types of fridge trees. Hands a body part. <laughs> Body parts. What sort of attributes would you have a body part? And it's simple on that. It's possible, I guess. Depends on how you get your data. A lot of things, a lot of things depend on your application and, and how you look at your data. But I'll put it on that one because that one might be a bit tricky. Maybe maybe hand is an example of a body part or an instance of a body part. Maybe it's more like John Shepard and a dog. Depends on your application and depends on what you're trying to do. That's it. You also have uh, laptop is computer. Phone is electronic. Yeah, yeah, phone is electronic device. In many ways you can have it. And often with things when you're building, like everything, there's, there's, there's no single right answer. There's many ways to carve things up and separate things. Uh, a lot of it's on what you want to do and, and, and what your application is. So how exactly to do it. Uh, it's, just, it's just to play and become comfortable with it. And, uh, and be, be careful if you're trying to shoehorn things in, into the wrong category of manner. That would be easy, I think. Or, uh, Just stay in my hand. Um, I don't have a lot of managers around my plates, but <laughs> maybe that's iffy as well. Okay, so we've got a new field for our managers, and it's a double field called bonus, and we might have set bonus and get bonus, for example. Yeah, everything else to do with employees is automatically available to us. So we can create managers. Manager boss equals new manager. And we need to work out the we we'll work out the constructors and things shortly. And then we'd say boss set bonus to 5,000. Okay, that's all we had so far in our manager class. That's about all we could do so far. We can almost we can almost create a manager. We're not quite there yet. We don't have the constructors. But we could say boss set bonus anyway. Uh, inherited methods from employee class can be applied to manager objects. So there's no there's no name here, but we can say boss or get name. That's quite okay. Okay, because it extends employees. So everything in the employee class is automatically available to managers. So we could declare a, a manager. I'll do it there. It's 
the code was going to fill in the gaps. We haven't done the constructors yet. Boss dot set bonus. Five thousand. Okay. We can say system dot print line. Now we haven't set we haven't we haven't set the manager's name in here yet. So probably going to get back null or space, you know, just to one click at the moment. You can still call the method for for uh, the boss. In fact, up here we could say boss dot name. Okay, so boss dot set name. Call the employee plus method set name, and uh, and then we could say boss dot get name, and that would say funky. Okay, so this data is even stored in the manager class. It's in the employee class that manager is linked to it. So it's got all that data and all those methods automatically linked to it. Okay, so it's a manager method, and this one's an employee method. That's quite okay to do that sort of thing. Inherited methods in the employee class can be applied to manage objects like boss.game, boss.set name, and so on. Boss.set counting ID, boss.set higher date, whatever you need to do. Okay. What the classes provide more general methods in the superclass and more specialized methods in subclasses? Okay, so employee. It should just be a general class that any type of employee. Anything, any attributes or data you need to store for any employee, for every employee should be in the employee class. So name, date of birth, date, all that sort of stuff. Okay. Then manager is a more specialized, more focused. So only for managers. So this, uh, this class here should have anything to do with managers. I need the data. Let's deal with managers. The employee one has data and methods to handle all types of employees. So it's really a general purpose, this one. And the manager class is much more focused, much more focused. So the get salary method, which is part of our employee class, uh, will not return the total salary and the bonus manager of, for the manager. Okay, so let's just fill in a bit more detail here for our last week. There it is there. So that was, a, here's our, uh, we have a salary here for employee and we've got a, a get salary, which is a salary and a set salary, that's the salary. Okay, so at the moment, if we say set salary, boss gets salary, we're actually calling one that's an employee class. So we're calling this one, uh, calling this one to get a salary. When we say boss.set salary, we're calling the employee one because there's none in the manager. Okay, if there's the same method as in the manager class, we'd invert the manager one. Okay, but there's no, there's no, there's no set salary or get salary or set name or get name in the manager class. So when you say boss dot set name, Java goes back up the hierarchy to try and find a method can use. Okay, Let's get back to the employee class and focus those ones. Okay, so set salary, get salary, that are employee methods. Name the employee method. Okay, so we only got one manager method in our manager class at the moment, and that's it. Bonus. Okay, so we call it salary for boss. 
will get 4,000 back. Their bonus isn't included. Okay. So we could, we could get an up at another method there called get bonus and go get salary plus get bonus or never else manager. But how do we make that automatic? Okay, that's what, what we'll talk about. So we need a class. Just quickly, that's this dot bonus equals bonus. We're not doing any other stuff. Let's do a salary, so provide it public. Get salary. Okay. So we, we, you, you, you might think we could do something like that. And it's pretty close to what we can do. Okay. So salaries and employee plus field and bonus. Bonus is our field here, or instance field. Okay, so for the manager's version of the agreement, we could say return salary plus a bonus. Okay. Um, it's much better to, to use the access method to do it. Okay, so we'll say get salary. And when I get salary, well, there is a get salary here. Okay, so how much, it's just gonna call itself again over and over again. So how do we make it so it calls the parent class get salary method? And the answer's on the slide here. So we say super dot get salary. The super class method, somewhere, somewhere by this class is get salary method. Call that one. Is what we're saying there. So super dot get salary. The job just goes looking up the inheritance hierarchy, and there's only one class above the employee class. And so just calls to get salary for that, and then we add a bonus. Okay. So if we go down here. So if we, if we say boss dog gets salary now, that's now the manager method. Get salary. Okay, because it's going kind of, kind of at Java's going to look in the, we've, we've called a method for a manager object. So Java's going to look through the manage class and see if you can find a method to go in an there it is. Okay, until we have that method there, that method exists. Java's just going to the hierarchy automatically until I found a method it could call. Method could use. So you see, employee one, but now it's the manager one. It was the employee one. So simply look at salary to get the employee salary and then add on the bonus and return that. You don't need do two lines of code there, or you can do it in one line of code like this. Both are fine. Okay. Now you must see this little override here. Override's a great thing. I did talk about it a little bit in the prior course. So we've got a method here, the same name as the parent class method. And if you put a little antenna override here, it just makes Okay, so if I put an override there, Java does a whole lot of extra checking for us. And part of that checking is to make sure this method exists in a parent class. So it's public void, it's called get salary. If there were parameters specified in there, they would all have to match the parent class as well. So Java is saying, when you put an override there, it checks that method exists in at least the parent class in this class. So if I, if I call this get salary by mistake, if I would guess, Java will go as compilation error. Okay, if I called it 
Upper case case salary, again, compound share of the class. The meta doesn't exist in parent class. Okay. So by overriding methods, some parent classes, subclasses, you can make sure that the right one is called at the right time. If we pull that salary, the uppercase G, let's off the override. Danny will not be saying boss dot get salary. That's using the employee version, not the manager version. Because the employee, the manager version is an uppercase T. Okay, so it's just a way of making sure you've done the linkages right. Uh, if, there's, if, there's a, if you need a special version of the method in a, in a subclass, you can make sure you call the right one always. Uh, or putting overrides to that is good. Okay, so just to summarize, I'll just summarize a little bit. Override. Java does a lot of extra checking for you, does extra, does extra checking. All time to make sure, to make sure this exact same method exists in the current class. You write one little command and Java will hold it as you're checking for the warning things are right. And you might be thinking, well, that's how we swap that in the right. Uh, but overall, you can do a click class people's things. And I'm not being incredibly making sure that it is overridden properly. Overall, I can save you hours and hours hunting for an error. Just because you put the wrong base in here or the wrong parameter or we put them in the wrong order, the fingerprints didn't match. So, so the method data method in the subclass must exactly same turn type, same name, same parameters. Order of parameters and so on. Okay, so there's a lot of checking Java does for you for one little command. So definitely worth using. Um, any questions what we've done so far? So is there any reason not to do the override? Like I know we've overridden the um, two string method plenty of times and we've never used that override before. Is it just because it's not necessarily required or? Uh, well, was, we, we, we could only do so much Java in, in, the, in the prior course. Um, so I'll, I'll show you what happens with overriding two string. I'm not going to do it now. Yeah, so let's do it. Let's do it for two string. Public string. Two string. We're going to return plus a tab. So calling in super plus two string method, which is our we'll assume there's a two string method in our employee class. And we want to override. Okay, so we want to override that one. And I'll actually make a saying called our case two string. Okay, so now I go to system out print line. Boss. What will we see on screen? So two strings with an uppercase T. What we see on screen there, and what we see on screen this. So I assume the first one would do a two string from the employee class. Well, actually, that's a very good that's a very good guess. Um, pretend we'd spelled that we'd done the, uh, the the employee one wrong as well. That's a very good guess. Okay. Um, so if we if we'd done both wrong, uppercase T for two string, uh, what would happen with this one? What would we see on screen? It'd just be the default two string 
which is in the employee, which is in the object class. So the, the parent of all classes in Java, if you don't put an extends there, we haven't said it, we haven't talked about this much yet. I think we've been mentioned it in passing in a prior class, of course, but if you don't put extends there, uh, Java automatically inserts the extends object, which is the parent of all classes in Java. Uh, doesn't insert it into your source code, it inserts it into the compile code. So extends object. And in, inside the object class is a lowercase t, two string method there. And, um, and that's automatically called whenever you need a string representation of your data. Okay. And it shows something like the class name, which would be manager. Sand manager, I think it's I think it is. And then hexadecimal number or something. I don't know, something like that. Okay. Uh, so it shows you the class name and, and, and the, the reference to where it is in memory, the memory address of the data. Okay, that's what the that's what the default two string method shows you. If I said boss dot two string with uppercase T and that was uppercase T, then I'd get the employee data plus the tab plus the bonus. Okay, so we'd see something like four thousand on the screen. There'd be extra bits as well, maybe depending on what the employee data was set to. It might be Frankie, Frankie followed by something else, followed by something else, followed by the bonus. Okay, because we're calling it directly. But if we made that lowercase two string and did this again, and did that again, we would actually see the same stuff. So when Java saying you want a string representation of your data, I want to look for a two-string method that I can call, and it's got to be lowercase t, uppercase s, for it to match up to the one that's in the object class. You see, see, overriding the one in the object class. So again, that's where override comes in so useful here is for two-string, because if you, if you if you mess things up and make that uppercase t, or lowercase s, or, or whatever, Java will pull you up with a compilation error and say that method isn't overridden in the parent class. Okay, so make it, make, make it two string and override, and then Java automatically calls it for you when, you when it needs a string representation of your data. For example, here, we don't need to call it directly. It just does it automatically. We get the string, re string representation of our data. No more of this class name followed by the memory address stuff that we don't want to see. We want to see the data. Okay, so just by making that little change, making it so it matches the method in the object class and putting override there. Java does all the extra checking for us to make sure that it does match up. And of course, we do the same thing in the employee class. We'd have a two string method with an override on it. Okay, so that's how override sort of works. And so really, it's, it's, it's a programmer's friend. It's one, little, it's one little command with an ampersand and Java does a whole lot of extra checking for you. Okay, so well worth doing when you need to. Okay, so if you've got, uh, you have a method, same name, in super sub classes, make sure you, make sure you override and just gets that Java to do that extra checking for you. So in, in this example here, we had override for two-string because that was overriding the, the one that's in the employee class and also overriding the one that's in the parent class of all classes, which is object. And we also had an override for get salary so that the Java does that extra checking for us to make sure that there's a get salary method in an employee. There's none in object class. There's no salary in object class, but there is an employee class. So we're getting that Java to do that extra checking for us. And again, for, for simple methods like this, it's very hard to get it wrong. But, but when you're dealing with really complex classes with lots of parameters and things, it's so easy to get the, the order of the parameters wrong or a, a little change in the case of the method. Um, you know, you might be, you might say get URL in one class and get URL in another class or something like that. 
And that that's sort of error can be really hard to track down because you need to really go through and trace through your code with a debugger or put print line statements in your code to see what's going wrong and why things aren't getting called. And then you'll go, <laughs> why didn't I override? Okay. And, uh, and that, that happened to me with a, with, a, with a game I was working on. Um, something really strange was going on with the game. It just it, it wasn't calling the method I thought it was call, it, sh it should have been calling for, for just one of the objects added to the game, one of the monsters. And, uh, and it turned out to be I'd had the wrong case scenario and I didn't use override. So, uh, you know, it's, it's easy to do. When you're, when you're writing a lot of code and you're doing it on the fly, it's easy to leave override out, but it's a good thing to add. So. Okay, so we, we might have a little break and come back. So it's 10.03, we'll come back at 10.08. Have a five minute break and then we'll come back. Okay, back again. Um, can everyone hear me, hear me okay? Is it okay? <laughs> yep. Okay, thanks. thanks it was, it's been a little bit better just the last few minutes before we stopped, so hopefully it'll stay that way. Okay. Okay. Okay, thanks, Lewis and uh, everyone. Um, so there's where the override is there for this one, overriding get salary, because the same method exists in the manager class and the employee class. And so when we say employee red equals new employee, whatever, we say Fred dot get salary. The, the employee one's going to get called. Okay. But when we do it for manager, Here, the manager version is going to get called. Here, the employee version. Or well, the employee gets salary. The manager gets salary will be called. Because this is a manager object, and that's, a, that's an employee object. So Java automatically knows uh, which one to call, depending on the type of the object. So th this is an employee, so the employee methods gets called. Boss, boss is a manager, so the, the manager version gets called. Okay, so that's, that's how it all sort of ties together. Okay, so when we start talking about the manager constructors, you'll start seeing some strange stuff that we have to live with for now. Okay, so you'll see a name gets passed through to the manager, but the manager doesn't have names. A salary gets passed through to the manager, but the manager doesn't have salaries, year, month, and day, and so on. And the reason why we're passing those through to the manager is that we can use the manager constructor to create managers and also populate all the fields to do with the employees as well. Okay, so super followed by name, salary, year, month, day, that's calling the employee class parameterized constructor, which is this one here. So we're passing through. No, it's not. We need another, we need another uh, one with a high day, sorry. This one. Oh, they, they tricked us with having two, two versions of the employee, employee class. So this one's got the name followed by the salary. So if we go back to here, We've got the name followed by the salary. Okay, name followed by salary. Th these can be any order here you like, but it's best to follow the same order that you've got on the superclass method. So you can just pass things through, through directly and not get things out of order. You can switch months and days and all that sort of stuff. So keep the same order, same order. And over here, the same order. So string, name, double, salary, and then ints for year, month, and day. So string for name, Double for salary and in some year, month, and day, and the same up here. So when we've, when we've got this constructor here for the manager, we're not actually passing through a bonus. So we just set their bonus to zero. So it's all nice and initialized. And then when they want to set the bonus, they can call set bonus. Okay. 
or else we could add another field on here for bonus, another double called bonus, and say this dot bonus equals bonus down here. So both of those ways would work fine. Okay, so here we're actually calling the employee class uh, parameterized constructor, and we're passing through those fields so that they can be set up properly in the employee class. So these fields here. So we're creating, we're creating a local date from the year, month, and day, and they're the instance fields. Okay, so, so the employee is responsible for the employee data, and the manager is only responsible for the manager data. Okay, and that's the only, the only manager data at this stage is a bonus. So the statement super name, salary, et cetera, calls the constructor, the parameterized constructor in the employee class with the name, salary, year, month, and day that are passed through. So just pass them through to the employee class. Let them deal, let the employee class deal with it. So the manager constructor cannot access private, the class's private fields. So even though this class, manager class extends um, the employee class, you still can't access the private data directly. Okay, so, so like up here, if I try to make this just salary on its own, that would be an error because we're trying to access private class data from outside of the class. So manager, even though this is relationship between them, employee data is still private inside the class and, and manager can't access it directly. Okay, now there is another type of data. There's public, private, and there's protected. Okay, and we haven't talked about this one because we don't cover it in the courses, but if we made, it, if we made the data protected, we could access it here, okay? If we're in, if we're in the same package, we can access it. But we won't talk about protecting. Okay, so if you need to access the, the superclasses data, use it, use the accessor methods. If you need to change the superclasses data, call the mutator methods and, um, and just treat it like a normal class. Okay. So we can now take our, our manager class down here and fill in the extra details for the constructor. So we could have a public manager, which takes a string. Salary, double salary. And we could say bonus zero and call a superclass constructor. Draw that data. We can have another constructor as well, which takes the bonus as well. So we'll add another one that takes in the bonus, double bonus. We say this dot bonus equals bonus, just like we did before for the other shadowed fields. Okay, so now we're setting the bonus as well in the constructor. We could have another one that takes just the name and That would be a comma. Okay, so this one takes just the just the name and the hire date because we don't know when we don't know the salary details yet. They're still being negotiated, uh, so we just pass through zero for the salary because we don't have a field for salary and just set the bonus to zero. So you can have all those sorts of constructors you like if you like. Whatever makes sense. For your application, uh, you know, if, if if you if you've got users that need a constructor, um, that's only got when you've only got part of the data for the for the manager, provide a constructor that handles that situation. Okay, so now we can create managers in three ways. Let's do it. So we pass through the name, followed by the salary, followed by the year, month, and day. 
and Frankie's got a $4,000 salary and he's hired on a 2007 20, hired on the 1st of July. Okay, so that calls the first parameterized constructor because we've got a string, a double, and three integers. A string, a double, and three integers. Let's, let's call the second one, the second constructor. Boss two, we'll pass through a bonus as well. That might be Bella. $5,000 salary and a $1,000 bonus. Okay, so that calls this constructor, which takes a string, a double, three integers and another double. String, a double, three integers and another double. Don't forget Java automatically promotes integers to doubles when it needs to. So this is the same as saying 5,000.0. Java takes care of all that for you automatically. Um, and then we'll call the third one as well, which has just got the, the name and the start date. Okay, so we'll create a new sort of boss and they've only got the name and the start date and that'll be Sam, boss three. And we've only got the, the start date, which is the 14th of July. Okay, so we've created managers three ways there by using the three parameterized constructors. Okay, so what, what constructors should you provide in your classes? Okay, so what, what, what constructor should you provide? So at the minimum, a default constructor. If you don't have your manager yet, I'll go and edit it in a second. And a parameterized constructor. That initializes all of the required data and any other PCs that make sense. Or any, any other parameterized constructors that make sense. Your application needs, so that's what you should provide. So we don't have a default constructor in our manager class. Let's add that in. So default constructor. What would that look like? So it would have nothing inside the brackets here because it's a default constructor. What would we, would we call here? Would we just pass through blank and zeros? Or is there another constructor we can use over here? Let's have a look. So there's no default constructor here. If there was a default constructor, we could just call it like that. But there's no default constructor in this class at the moment. So we probably should add that in as well. But until we do, we can't just call it like that. So we'll just pass through blank, zero, 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 zero. Okay. And then set boss to, and then set bonus to zero. Okay. So that's doing it by calling the superclass constructor directly and setting the bonus. But we could also call one of these methods, one of these other constructors. Let's, let's do that. So instead of that code, we could say, this call the one that takes everything. So names blank, salaries blank, year, month, day is zero, and bonus is zero. So that's calling this manager constructor. We could do the same thing here. Instead of calling the superclass constructor and setting bonus to zero, we could just invoke this constructor here if we wanted to. This followed by all that, followed by bonus of zero. Okay, so we're invoking this constructor. And same down here, instead of doing that. So you see this often happens for your, um, your, your constructors. You often just have one super constructor that does all the work and the other constructors just call that one. And that makes, makes means you're duplicating a lot less code. Because don't forget, we're not doing any validation here. If this is a real class used for a real application, we'd be validating name, not be blank, making sure it's at least three characters, making sure salary is greater than a thousand and less than a million or whatever the valid re reasons are. Months between one and 12, days between one and 31, that leap years are correct, all that sort of stuff we'd be checking. Okay, so this validation, if we're doing a validation here and here and here and here, 
going to be a nightmare. So it's much easier just to call one constructor when you can, call one method. Okay, so for that one we go this, followed by those, followed by zero for the bonus. Okay, so we're just all invoking, all, all the constructors now invoke this one. This is now the, the boss constructor, if you like. <laughs> that's the one that's really doing all the work. Okay, so that's using the this keyword. Super means call a superclass method. This means call, uh, well, uh, for the current object. I mean, for the current object, for the current manager. So this followed by round brackets means call a method in the current class, or in this case, a constructor. Okay, are there any questions on, on that? So that's, that's really overloading. Again, um, had the question about overloading earlier. These are overloaded methods. We've got the constructors, but they're still special methods. We've got multiple methods with the same name. And which one gets invoked depends on what parameters we pass. So that's overloading. That's what overloading is. Polymorphism overloading. Okay, so down here, it looks like we're invoking different constructors, and we are, but behind the scenes now, they're all really passing through all the, all the, all the work to one constructor. And we've also got our, our default constructor there. So let's call that down here, and we'll create a new manager. Boss4 equals new manager. Okay, so that's calling the default constructor. Is that okay? Any questions on that? I realize a lot of this stuff's probably new to people, but uh, especially the inheritance side. Um, any questions? Okay, let's move on. The, the, the call using super should be the very first statement in your subclass constructor. So when I go super up here, I'm calling the, the superclass constructor and passing through the data. That's got to be your first line of code. Okay. Should be the very first statement in your constructor, in your subclass constructor. So, in fact, if you even do this, that's an error. <laughs> Java is so worried about this being your first statement inside your constructor, it's even a bit twitchy about having a comment there, or at least it was. Okay, so I'll just check if that's still the case, but it used to be twitchy about that. Um, if the superclass has arguments, then they must match up with what's in the superclass constructor. So if you pass through a string, an int and a double, the superclass must accept the string, an int and a double. If it can't find a constructor that matches up, you'll get a compilation error. If the super has no arguments, then it's, the superclass should have a no argument constructor. In other words, a default constructor. That's a no argument constructor, nothing inside round brackets. Like this one. That's a default constructor. Yes, that's right. So Nicholas has just confirmed that with me. Yeah, so let's, um, I, think I don't think I've got enough code here to show you, but you, you'll see that in the tute anyway. And if not, we'll, we'll do it in next week's class. I'll, I'll, I'll put all this code into separate files and we'll run it. Okay, and I'll extract all that code there from, from, that, from that slide and we'll, we'll run it, we'll see. Okay, but uh, I won't do it now. It's running out of time. I've been waffling a lot again. Okay, so you, your arguments must match up. So here we've got a, a, a string, a, a string, a double, and three integers. So you must have a constructor in the employee class that has those parameters in that order. If there is no explicit Super call in the super in the subclass constructor, then the no argument constructor of the superclass will be invoked. Okay. If the superclass does not have a no argument constructor, Java reports a compiler error. 
Okay, so if we didn't have that super call there, Java would automatically invoke the default constructor in the employee class. And if there's not one there, uh, it will give you a compilation error. So that's why I say it's like baking a cake. What, what constructors should you provide? A default constructor always for all your classes and at least one parameterized constructor. Okay. And, uh, and what else should you provide in your methods? So you should have accessors for each of your class instance fields. You should have mutators for each of your class instance fields. And you should have a two string method. And later on, we'll look at adding other things as well, like compare to and, and that sort of thing. So they're, they're the basics for now. So um, that's, that's what you need for each of your classes. Each your data classes. So if you don't have a, a default constructor in your superclass, you'll get a compilation error. So just just provide, just follow. It's like it's like baking a cake. Follow the recipe, and you can't go wrong. That's, that's, what you, that's how you build your classes, a default constructor, one parameterized constructor at least, accessors for each instance field, mutators for each instance field, and a two-string method. And we'll add more to that as we go through the term. So here's an example of a manager test. Manager boss equals new manager, a name followed by a salary followed by a high day. And then we've got uh, boss.get salary, boss.get name, boss.set bonus. Okay, so the bosses, the managers get salary, gets the employee salary plus the bonus. Then we get an employee, and then we're doing the employee get name and get salary. So that calls the employee get salary. This one he calls the manager get salary. There's no get name method in the manager class, so Java goes back up the tree until it finds a get name method it can use, and of course it finds it in the employee method, employee class. So uh, we're, that's invoking the employee method. And that's fine because with that relationship, manager is a employee. And the output would be would be that. So just like you'd expect. So this is the, the salary plus the bonus. That's just the salary. That's an employee, that's the manager. Uh, okay, so any questions on, on that so far? On inheritance? So let's nothing at the moment. Nothing at the moment. Okay, thank you. Uh, let's go on to casting. And we did do quite a lot of casting in the prior course, but only very sort of basic stuff, really. For example, here we've got a double. Int d equals 2.15. If we try to say int i equals d, we get uh, a compilation error of possible loss of precision. So we need to convert it to, we need to convert that double d to an integer. And we can do that with type casting. Okay, so you put a data type inside round brackets before the, the field name or the variable name, and Java does a conversion for you. So this is saying, convert this double D to an integer and store the result in the integer I. Okay, so convert to an integer just means chop off the decimal places. So that's typecasting. We're converting from one type to another. You can do the same thing with employees. So we, we can go down casting. So we can use an employee reference to manager reference, for example, this. Um, so employee emp equals new employee John. Manager boss equals manager emp. We're trying to convert an employee to a manager. And there's that relationship. Don't forget that manager is a employee, but employee is not a manager. Because not all employees are managers. So the relationship's one way, it's this way. Manager is employee. So here we're trying to say, uh, we're creating an employee and trying to treat them as a manager and that's not allowed, okay? You, you, um, 
you, you can go the other way. You, you, you can go the other way, but you can't go treat an employee as a manager. Okay. Because they're missing things like the bonus. There's nothing, there's, there's no, they've got no bonus or anything like that. So they can't be a manager. So when you try and do this sort of thing, when you go the wrong way, you try and go back up the tree the wrong way. Java creates a, a cast exception. And if you don't have a try catch, which we haven't officially done yet, try catch, then you'll have a your program will crash. You'll have a compilation error or a runtime error in your program will crash. Yeah, runtime error. Uh, if you want to find out what's, what type of data something is, you can use this great method called instance of. And if, if whatever it is, it could be called Fred or it could be called, it could be something in an array. But if that is an instance of manager, then you can safely convert it to a manager or you can safely call manager methods for that, for that object. So whatever that is, it might not be called M, but M, M's pretty clear it's an employee, but it could just be something in an array. And you can say, if that's an instance of manager, then you can, you can typecast it to a manager and invoke manager class methods for it, like set bonus and get bonus and so on. Okay, so before you start calling methods for an object, do this little check. Check if it's an instance of that class that you expect it to be. And if it is, then you can invoke those methods safely. Okay, so find out what it is with instance of, and then you can do the typecasting safely without having to worry about whether it's gonna fail or not. You can only cast within the inheritance hierarchy. So use instance of to check before downcasting from superclass to subclass, for example. I said manager is an employee, so I could say manager boss equals new manager. I could say employee imp equals employee boss. That's quite okay, because manager is an employee. Okay. But if you try and do it the other way around, imp2 plus 2 equals manager. That's a error. Okay, you get that, you'll get that cast error. Cast, class cast exception error, okay? Because not all employees are managers. All managers are employees, so that's okay. You can convert, an, you can convert a, a, a boss or a manager to an employee, that's fine. But you can't convert employees to managers because you're missing fields, you're missing the bonus, for example. Okay, so that would be an error. And that's okay because the manager is an employee and that's not okay because an employee is not a manager. So it's a one-way relationship. Okay, so the instance of, if you're keeping a summary of Java as we go, keeping a summary of useful Java in a, in a little text file, which is what I recommend you do, keep, keep all snippets of code that are useful, keep that. That's, that's absolute pure gold later on in the term. Okay. And uh, you'll, you'll, you won't be able to remember what that command was, instance of, you'll be going, what is it? What was it to work out whether it was something was something else? So keep that in there. So object is the, so we can now talk about object as well. Object. The object class, the parent of all classes in Java. So if you create a class like this, public class, my class, Behind the scenes, Java does this. It puts extends object there. It doesn't insert it into your source code, but it inserts it into the compiled code automatically for you. So if you don't put extend something there, Java automatically extends the object class. Okay, and that's why if you go my class, A equals new my class, I'll call it something better than that. And go system dot line. 
Okay. That's why you get that class name, which is my class, ampersand my class, followed by that hexadecimal number. Or it might even just be something like that. Okay. That's why you get that, because it's the object class is two string method that's running. You're not calling the object class directly. You don't even you, you didn't even know it existed probably till today. Uh, but behind the scenes, because we want a string representation of our data, if this class can't do it, Java goes back up the tree until it finds the object class and runs its two string method, which returns the class name with an ampersand or something, followed by the memory reference of where the data lives. Okay, so public class employee extends object. If you, if, if you didn't put extends object on there and you didn't extend any other classes, Java automatically puts extends object on there for you into the compiled code. And um, so then we can declare objects of type employee because employee is an object. Okay, object object, object equals new employee, John 35,000. So this is just a general purpose object and we're creating them as an employee. And then we can we can typecast them back to be an employee. Employee emp equals employee obj. We're uh, putting around brackets around to do the typecasting. And we could also, just for safety, we could say if obj is instance of employee before doing that, and that would just make that extra safe. So if obj is, is instance of if obj instance of So that's that, that that cold there is is pure gold later on in the term. So keep that in mind. Instance of uh, okay, that's the type casting there. Recommend you do the, the instance of check before you do it, just to make it extra sure. Otherwise, put it in a try catch, which we haven't done yet. Okay. So the two string method of the object returns a string representation representing the values of the object. The two string method can be overridden in the employee class. For example, override two string, get class or get name. So get class is a really useful method built into Java, which gets you the class. In this case, it would be it would be employee for the employee class. Get name gets you the, the name of the class. In other words, it's a bit of text. So you can display it to the screen or whatever. So get class dot get name, that's another useful bit of code. And then we just can display the name and the salary and the hire day and so on. So that might be a two-string method that might be useful while you're testing. Probably wouldn't be useful to have a list in the output with square brackets and commas, but it's good enough for testing. Okay, get class, get name. That's very useful as well. And then in the manager class, the manager extends the employee, we've got the override again, and we're returning super.toString. So in other words, we're getting everything to do with the employee's data, the string representation for the employee data. And then adding on the bonus, which is what the manager class knows about. So when we've got an employee emp equals new employee, the details of the emp can be printed on the screen by the following code. So once we've got a two string method in our employee class, we could say emp dot two string or just emp. And Java says, okay, you're printing it to the screen. You want a string representation of that data. I'll see if I can find a two string method. And it will find one because it'll either find it in the employee class or the object class above that. Okay, so, so one way or another, it's gonna get a, a string. <laughs> and if you've got a two string method in your employee class, it'll run that one automatically when you do this or that. Both those lines of code will do the same thing. So here's a more complete example of our employee class now. Um, so nothing's changed here, nothing's changed here. That's from the, the same as last week. Ah, now we've got the equals method. So we're determining now whether an employee is equal to another employee, which we haven't done before. Okay, so we're, we're creating our own equals method. So now we can say um, if imp one, dot equals two. If that's true, then we can do whatever. 
we can do whatever. So this, is, this is what this method will provide. We can now compare employees with the equals method. So how does it work? Okay, so you're taking an object and it's gotta be an object otherwise, uh, and, and ideally there should be an ampersand. Well, I'll, I won't talk about anything more. No. Okay, so just taking an object, call it another object or object two or object or whatever you wanna call it. Um, if the memory addresses are the same, so if this is equal to other object, so they're at the same location in memory, then they must be the same object, so they've got to be equal. So return true. If other object is equal to null, return false. They can't be equal because what what the, the the object that's calling the employee that's calling the the method can't be null, otherwise it couldn't call a method. Null can't call a method. So all we need to do is check this one. So if other object is equal to null, return false. The employee can't be equal to a null employee because the original one can't be null. Uh, if, an, if the class names don't match, if so, if the class for this object, for our current object, is equal to the other object's get class, if they don't match, return false. Okay. So this isn't a string compare. This is actually um, the, the class details behind the scenes getting compared. Okay. So the class, if the get classes don't match. So that's not a string. If it was a string, we'd be saying uh, dot compare to or dot equals or but to get the string of the class, it's get class dot get name. To get to just get the class details, which is what we're comparing here, is just get class. Okay, so I'm so if, start off by comparing the if the objects are the same location in memory, if the other objects null, return false. If the classes don't match, return false. They can't be the same if they're different classes. And then convert. Uh, although, um, if you typecast a manager to be an employee, yeah, anyway, we won't get into that. That's not a, that's a good thing to do, is compare the classes. Then you want to typecast this, whatever this thing is, this object here is to be an employee. Okay. And ideally, I'd like to see an instance of check there as well when you're doing this. So if other objects is instance of employee is false, then uh, return false as well, and then do this. So employee other equals employee other object. So we're typecasting the other object to be an employee. And then we're comparing their name and then their salary and then their hire day. And we're doing that all in one pretty horrible looking command. So if the objects are equals, object.equals, name and other names, so we're comparing the names. If that's true, then we compare the salaries. Salary equals other salary. And if that's true, then we compare the high days using this objects.equals. Okay. You could also use um, name.compare to other.name. That would be fine as well. Uh, or uh, name.equals other name. Other.name. And down here, instead of comparing the dates, you could say high date.equals other higher date and so on. You could do that as well. That'd be fine. Uh, object equals is just a little bit more uniform. It's the same method call for each one. So if the names don't match, it'll return false. If the names match and the salaries don't, it'll return false. If the names and the salaries match, but the higher days don't match, it'll return false. All three of these things have to match before it returns true. Okay. So the only way, only, only way to return true from this method is if the memory addresses are the same or everything else is passed and, and all the values inside the instance fields match. So pretty cool. It's, it's, a, it's a pretty nasty looking bit of code when you first see it. But the beauty of it now is that we can compare employees. If employee one equals employee two, we can say if that's equal to true or equals to false. Now, now that we've got the equals method. So going up to our, uh, our little recipe that we had up here, we've now added an extra thing into our recipe, which is, What should you provide for each data class? So we'll add another extra method in now, and it's the equals method. So if you get in the habit of doing that for each class you create, each data class you create, like product or employee or customer or whatever, get in the habit of creating an equals method as well, very soon this code here won't be so scary. Okay.
And then the two string methods, just getting the, the class, uh, getting the name of the class and tacking on the values of the instance fields with some labels. Okay, so any questions on that so far? All okay. So that's now the employees class. We're going to build on that at the moment. Yes, that's good. Thanks, thanks, Lewis. So we'll we'll, we'll, we'll build on this class as we go. And <laughs> Wayne's giving a thumbs up. Thanks, Wayne. Okay. So, and then the manager class, class manager extends employee. We've got a, a single instance field called bonus. We've got a manager constructor or a parameterized constructor, which takes in all of the data to do with an employee, and then. Um, calls a superclass constructor to pass all that data across and set the bonus to zero. We have a special version of the get salary method. I'd like to see the ampersand override there to make that really clear. Ampersand override. Uh, and then you got to, then that Java does that extra checking to make sure this method matches a, a method in the employee class. Set bonus sets the bonus equals. So down here the, the manager method equals method is is much simpler. Um, um, so if super dot equals other object is false, return false. Okay. In other words, if not super equals other object, return false. So the the super class equals methods already worked out. They're not the same. They're, they're not they're not the same memory address. Um, they're they're either um, not the same data types or the the field values don't match. So if that returns false, no point checking further. We're out of it. Otherwise, we just need to check that it's a manager object and check that the bonuses are the same. Okay. Um, and again, I would like to do an instance of check on that before I do this typecast. It's funny the slides say to do that check before doing it, and then they present an example where they don't do it. <laughs> so do that if other object is instance of manager before you do this typecasting. And if that's false, then ret return false. Whatever you, whatever you pass through here is not a manager. Okay, and then the two string method, we're overriding that. So that's the one overridden from the employee class, which is overridden from the object class. And we just call the superclass two string method, which is the employee class's two string method, and tack on the bonus. So it's going to be pretty horrible output and closed in square brackets, but it's good enough for testing. And uh, so some design hints: place common operations and fields in the superclass. So put everything that's common to all objects. You now, if you're talking about animals or people or products, whatever, and you've got an inheritance hierarchy, put all the common stuff that's common to all objects of that type of that of that hierarchy. Put them all in the superclass, the parent class and then break it down into subclasses. Um, in this course, we don't use protected methods or protected data. So just avoid those for now. There's just a, there's some tricks and traps of them we just want to avoid. So we just keep public or private. That's all we use in this course. So use the inheritance model is a relationship. Make sure it's a, a true is a relationship. Uh, for example, if you had this sort of thing, So you got to, if, if you had a if you had an employee class, and you had another class that had an, an array of employees, so an array of these, you wouldn't want to do this, okay? Because employee array is not an employee. Okay, a manager is an employee, a secretary is an employee, but an array is not an employee. Okay, so. Oh. You, you can do it and you can make it work, but it's really abusing the inheritance mechanism. Well, inheritance abuse. <laughs> okay. A much better way to do it is composition.
That's much better. Okay. So we've got a we've got a the employee array class contains an array list of employees. Okay, that's a much better design. You, you can do it that way, but it's horrible and it's inheritance abuse and you end up with a whole nightmare of stuff happening where you've had to squeeze round pegs into round uh, square pegs into round holes and things. Uh, that's much better. So that's using composition. Composition. In other words, the employee array class is composed of uh, an, a data structure of employees and maybe other things as well. Better, much better design. So be careful of that sort of thing. If you if you if you go down this road, oh my god, be careful. You have to write some really nasty code to make it work. Um, don't change the expected behaviour when you override a method. For example, um, two string should just return a string. It shouldn't also whatever you know. It, the, the two string at each level should just return a string representation of the data. Um, uh, get salary should just return a salary at each level. Okay, so get salary for employee, get salary for manager, and so on. Use polymorphism, and, we, and we've been doing that already. So we've got the same method with the, the same method in multiple classes, and which one gets in, which gets invoked depends on the context. In other words, is it a manager object doing the calling or an employee object? and also the parameters that are passed. So uh, polymorphism overloading are similar topics. It just means many forms of the same method. Okay, which one gets invoked depends on context and the parameters passed. Okay, but we'll talk about more that more next week. Polymorphism overloading. And so we've got a few minutes left. People probably have to nip off to classes, so we might finish this next week. And it's also one of the two questions for this week, and, and it's one of the golden questions for the whole term. So this 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 this, this week there's a cars, vehicles. Or you break it down into cars, trucks, and so on. And that's one of the key questions of the term. Okay, so what you, what you learn from this question this week, you'll be applying to your assignments and to nearly every example from now on throughout the term. So make sure you get, uh, get, get your head around that one properly. Okay, but that's, we'll leave it there for now. And um, we'll come back and look at this, this next week as well. And um, but, uh, hope that was useful. Thanks for watching. Any questions before we go? Okay, it's 10.57, so you probably got to rush to your next class. Okay. Well, thanks everyone for joining in and coming along. And uh, I'll get these notes uploaded straight away. And I'll also um, convert the videos and upload them to, well, the only place I can upload them is YouTube, really. I can't upload them to the coursework page. So I'll upload them to YouTube in my in Mike's Java channel, which is that channel there. Okay. Anyway, thanks everyone. Have a nice day. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. No worries, Wayne. Have a nice day.